Hey, what's up? It's a figure hunter. Today we're going to talk about the Huawei GT3 battery life because I saw some interesting things when you switch from smart heart rate, which just picks up heart rate um, at different intervals based on how much activity it's detecting in the watch and the real time heart rate, which is basically every second throughout every day. And I wanted to do a video specifically on how long the battery lasts in each of these methods, also with always on versus just wrist gesture only with the screen off. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing for more. So Huawei actually rates this as seven days of active use and 14 days of just plain smartwatch use. Now, I'm assuming that means all the sensors off and just using it for the time and only using it with a you know, wrist raise. We're gonna look at it to see what the actual percentage time or length of time it can be used if you are turning on all the sensors. So the base case for this test is I am tracking sleep, I am tracking SpO2, I am tracking stress, and I am tracking um, skin temperature but I'm adjusting a couple of simple variables. So I'm testing it in always on mode where you basically do a wrist raise and the wrist raise only more brightens what's called an always on screen, which is a more subtle screen. And I'm testing it in that mode with just medium brightness. And then between smart heart rate tracking, which is not doing heart rate all the time, if it senses you're moving around a lot, it's gonna start looking for heart rate. and the real-time tracking, which just means it's constantly taking your pulse. Um, and then I'm also gonna test that real-time tracking with regard to just wrist raise only to see if turning off the screen, not having it always on the screen, makes a big difference in the battery drain speed because I noticed it was draining rapidly, like not anywhere near 14 days, not anywhere near seven days. So we're gonna look at the stats for that. We're gonna basically look at the watch just briefly just to sort of see um, a couple of these features, and then we're gonna look at the results, and then we're gonna look at the app to see how to adjust settings, and then we're gonna talk about it in summary. All right, so here you have the watch. I just wanna show a couple of quick things. Um, the Namely is what you get when you have an always on display. So this is the dim version of always on, and when you do a wrist raise, you can choose for it to go to this brighter version of the always on version of the watch face itself. And then you can touch you know, a button to make it activate the full watch face. There's also an option that when you do a wrist raise, it goes from that dim always on version of the watch face and it comes straight to this full illumination. So I didn't check to see what the damage would be to the battery if you went to full illumination, full detail to the picture or to the thing from the always on display. But the main thing is that when you do a wrist raise, it goes to a brighter version, which I I love. I mean, it is, it is just a beautiful watch. It, and that's one of the things I wanna show, 1.4 inch screen, and it's just fully you know, detailed and all the main aspects of it. But if you go into the settings, you can't change any heart rate accuracy tracking. You can't change any, you know, the system is basically just to restart or delete everything. Um, you know, you can only adjust, and this is where you would adjust the display aspect. So the brightness, we can see the brightness is uh, just 50% or medium brightness. Auto brightness, you can enable that, but I just didn't find it to be that great. Um, screen on five minutes, and then the watch face at home. Here's where you set the always on display and the always on display style, so always on display style. Or you can have it choose between raise to show always on display, that just means it's that brighter version, or raise to show the full heart rate. I don't know why that's scrolling and that's in separate captions or, you know in a wrap style, so to show the watch face. So that's where you set it up in the watch. Let's look at the results. All right, so the first setting we're gonna go with is always on. So the screen is always got a dim setting. When you do a wrist raise, it actually turns to a brighter version of an always on screen. And then if you touch a button or touch the screen, it turns to the face. Uh, medium brightness and heart rate smart. So only recording heart rate when it notices more activity. So the percentage drain, the number of hours it took for that very percentage drain, the estimated percentage um, drain per hour, time to the total drain, if you started at 100% went to zero, and the number of days that equates to. So you can see it's 4.1, 4.4, and then if you take the average, it's about 4.3 days that it'll last on those settings. So always on, medium brightness. Um, now we did, always on medium brightness, same thing as the first setting, but heart rate every second. So real time, constant heart rate. 
and you can see it immediately changes the whole paradigm. So basically time to total drain from 100% to 0%, you know, 33 hours, 30 hours, days, 1.3, 1.2, with an average of 31 hours to a total drain or an average of 1.32 days. So I thought, well, maybe it's the always on that's contributing as well. Well, if you turn it to wrist raise only, where the screen is off until you do a wrist raise, and you do medium brightness just like we did before, but we kept the heart rate every second, you don't see a big improvement. Time to total drain, 38, 35 hours, 1.6, 1.5 days, with an average of 36 hours to 100% down to 0%, days at 1.5. So again, always on, but with the heart rate smart, you get about 4.3 days. Always on, but heart rate every second, you're getting about 1.3 days. And wrist raise only, with heart rate still on every second, you're getting 1.5 days. So let's talk about that. All right, so this is the basic app. And as you can see, all of the metrics are on. Sleep tracking, stress tracking, SpO2 tracking, skin temperature tracking. Um, and if you go into the device, this is where you adjust any of those details. So you go in down below to the health monitoring on the middle left. And here's where you enable everything. And you know, true sleep, continuous heart rate monitoring, automatic stress test, automatic SpO2, and skin temperature. Obviously, I'm not doing any testing to turn off all these, so they're always gonna be on, but if you go into the continuous heart rate monitoring, you can see the monitoring mode goes from smart to real-time. Smart, it just adjusts the frequency based on how much movement it's picking up. So if you're moving a lot, it's gonna start checking it more frequently, and if you're not moving a lot, I think it just does one snapshot every five minutes versus once every you know second, which is a much fractional smaller. So real time is just every second. So that's the primary difference you would adjust if you want to better your battery life significantly is just keep it on smart. All right, so there you have it. You know, 4.3 days is a solid battery life when you have all the sensors on, but the heart rate only being tracked in smart-based variables, where it's only looking for heart rate in periodic times when it's noticing more activity. I haven't noticed any, you know, specific aspect where I'm losing valuable information. And in the workouts, it's just sort of tracking the heart rate just like it's supposed to, where it's staying on the entire time. Because each of these tests included a workout every day in which I was testing it. So if you look at 4.3, 4.4 days, that's pretty solid for always on display considering how beautiful the display is, all the sensors on, all the tracking that you would need and medium brightness. And then behind that, if you look at the real-time heart rate tracking where your heart rate is constantly being tracked, it's amazing how much it plummets. So obviously all the other sensors are on as well, but it is it should be stated in bigger, bolder letters on their you know, overview of this watch that if you actually want to use the sensors that are on this watch and you want the health metrics from this watch and you also want your heart rate to be seen and tracked at all times, then don't look at the 14-day number. Don't look at the seven-day number. It's back to an Apple Watch or a Samsung Galaxy Watch and it's a day and a half at best. And that's if you leave the always on off. So if you're always on on, it's just getting 1.2, you know, 1.3 days, and it doesn't really change it that much if you go without the big beautiful display at all times. So with that, that's the Huawei GT3 battery life testing. I am not gonna test like all the sensors off with the wrist raise versus not wrist raise, you know, always on display, but that is just something I wanted to point out because it is a huge factor, and I think this is a fundamental factor for if you're buying the Huawei GT3, is that the heart rate choice you make for how often it tracks makes a gargantuan difference in battery life. To Fit Gear Hunter, thanks so much for watching.